Okay, so um, today we'll be looking at proactivity. And I believe this is not like the first time we are hearing about this word. But we'll talk about it more in depth, see how it can impact our lives and see the differences. But before we begin, can you um, name a goal that you are working towards right now? What goal are you working to? You can unmute and or you type it in the chat box. Can you hear me or you are still thinking about it? You any specific goal that you are working towards now? Hello. Hello. Yeah, okay. Uh the goal that I'm working on is is working remotely. Is working remotely? Yeah. Okay. So um Peter said this goal is working remotely. I don't really understand that. Do you mean like getting a, a remote job? Yeah, yeah, sure. Remote job. So okay, so great. So now like you've known your goal. So can you like talk about some of the challenges that you envision you you face? And what are some of the things you can do before you even face those challenges? What are some of the things you know you can do for you to overcome them? Okay, oh, the challenge that I faced is that uh, I think that was an abrupt decision. It's something that maybe I've never thought about in my okay. whole life. Yeah, okay. so I just made the decision uh, because I just learned that uh, by having a remote job, uh, there's a lot that you can be doing uh, okay. in your personal life included. That's why okay. I made that decision. So the the challenge that, that I've been facing is actually uh, trying to transition from the matrix to the remote job. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So you've, um, like, your goal is um, securing a remote job. But in... For example, like in your country, like some of the challenges we face in Africa, for where I'm from now in Nigeria, I mean, if you're working remotely, you have to make sure you have um, constant electricity and very good internet. So, so those are some of the challenges that you may face if you start working remotely. So God help now, if you get the job, you'd have put some things in place for it to, um, to overcome those challenges. Maybe you go and secure um, a location, okay great so you have um maybe you have a location where they have stable internet and network and you know if your job is from nine to five you already maybe you've paid for the space so all of those things are your ambition even before um they take place so those are some of the ways we can be proactive we are not waiting for those things to happen before we respond to it so we are already like um we are already projecting some of those things. We are already like estimating the challenges that we may face. So even before they happen, we already um, have uh, things in place on how we will handle those things. So that is what example of how we can be proactive. So um, Tuznede said that to be a certified Flutter developer and secure a remote job, challenge I found that the company needs some skills like 10 Academy offer in order to be competitive and valuable skills like data analysis collaboration time management yes so that's a lot of those things and since that is your goal and you know what the company needs so before you even get there you're already like getting those skills you're working on yourself so those are some of the ways you can be proactive so now let's move on all right then there is this book called the seven habits of highly uh, highly effective people by Stephen Covey. I don't know if anybody has come across it. Anybody likes reading all these um, personal development book? It's a very popular book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. So um, you can, in the challenge document, I put the link there. If you are interested in reading the book, you can download the book from the link. But the first habit Stephen mentioned is that you should be proactive. For it to be very um, effective, you have to be proactive. Either in your personal life, in your professional life, you have to be proactive. And what does this mean? It means that we are responsible for our own lives. 
any change you want to acquire in your life, you are responsible for it. You don't blame it on your conditions. You, our behavior is a function of our decisions and not just our conditions. You are, you are, you take responsibilities for your choices and you are aware of the consequences they may lead to. So that is you being proactive. If something goes wrong, you look inwards, you self-reflect, and you look at how um, you might have changed it. Like, instead of you blaming it on maybe the situation or the circumstances attached to it. So that is one way that we can be very proactive. And that is what es and proactivity is essentially about. Either in your personal life, in your professional life, in the workplace, you are aware that you are, um, you are in control of your life. You take responsibilities of your choices, and you accept the consequences attached to it. So now, what's the differences between a proactive person and a reactive person? What is the difference between proactivity and reactivity? So when we say someone is proactive or when we say you have to be proactive, when proactive is when you make good choices to prevent something from escalating because you already envisioned that those things might happen. And when they eventually happen, you don't go, oh, then you are like running about like a chicken that they just cut off the head. You already envisioned it, so you have um, like a backup plan. You have put alternate, you have alternative um, choices that you can work with. But with a reactive um, person, then you have to deal with things as as they happen because you are not prepared for those things. So as those things come, that's when you re like you react to it. You don't like um, sit back to think about it that much. Just react to it. And then this type of situation, they blame this type of person. Usually blame it on the situation. Oh, it's because. Um, and it's because the rain fell heavily today. That was why I woke up. Just admit that you slept or you overslept. And then you look at how you can be better at that maybe by sleeping early, going to bed early, and all of those things, or even making your to-do list before the day before and before in the previous day, so that you already know what it is to be prepared for the for, for the next day, not just waking up the um, let's say on Tuesday morning. And you don't even know how your schedule will go. You are just going or following the day as, as it comes. So that's um, the differences between a proactive and a reactive person. So let's look at some other differences. The first thing one is proactive people. They don't blame anyone or anything. They take responsibilities for their actions. And then another thing is behavior. The proactive people, their behavior is a product of their conscious choice, which is based on values. And here, what we mean is for a proactive person, for example, as um, Gitere and Tusnede has pointed out, they want to like, secure a remote job. So a proactive person will start making the conscious efforts and the conscious uh, choices that will be based on those their goals. So they're already making those um, conscious efforts, learning the skills they know they need, applying to the jobs they know they are they're fit for. So they're already making, so their choices are on those things. And if they have those goals outlined the previous day, waking up the next morning, they, they don't just go, oh, I'm not uh, motivated today. They get the job done because their, their, um, their choices are based on the values, on the goals they've outlined. But unlike the reactive person, they will blame the circumstances, the conditioning, and their product is all, and their behavior is a product of how they feel their emotions oh i'm not feeling good today i don't feel motivated to work on it uh, i'll just wait till i have the inspiration to do the tax so that's how reactive person thinks and along the line if um someone is reactive most times you find out that they will procrastinate a lot and we already talked about procrastination when you do that over a long period of time you have tasks that are accumulating you have missed opportunities and you even feel overwhelmed as time goes on so another thing um for proactive people is that the, those proactive person they are still influenced by the external stimulus which means what we mean by this is that if you are proactive does not mean like you have everything all planned out does not mean like situations that you not even plan for or will not come up but what we are saying here is how you will respond to those things when it, they eventually happen that is what um, differentiates a proactive person from a reactive person in such situations the proactive person will still make choices based on their values rather than on how they feel per se so they the proactive person, even though they are still influenced by external stimulus, 
the way they will make their choices will be different from the way the active person will do because it will be based on the values that they've set for themselves it will be based on the goals they've set for themselves rather than on how they feel or oh, i feel good I don't, i'm not feeling too good and all of those um, excuses that will come up with so and proactive person as we've said before their response is value-based choice or response while reactive people they build their lives around other emotions so if you are feeling good today they'll get the work, uh, work done they'll be motivated to do a lot of things but on days when they don't feel all that well they'll not do they'll not get much of the work done now we now um but for us to assess from what i've talked about now just like think back and try to analyze yourself do you think you are a proactive person or you're a reactive person you don't have to answer that you can just like take a moment to think about some um situations or some circumstances or how you even in this 10 academy how you approach your uh, tax are you being proactive about it or you are just reactive you get so now just keep that in mind then let's move on to another way that we can look at um to differentiate between proactive and reactive people and how we can look at our own lives to know if we are reactive or if we are proactive and so now the first thing is you should focus and uh, you should analyze where you focus your time and your energy so here in this um here we have the circle of influence and circle of concern so here the proactive person they focus more on their circle of influence and what we mean by this is that the circle of influence there are those things that are in your control the things that you know you can effect change on the things that you know you can work on so those are the things that are in your control but the circle of um, concern there are things that are not in your control they are the negative energy and for example okay let me for example, in the workplace, if you are, um, if you have, maybe you are, you are working with your colleague, your team member, and maybe just to the two of you, you've been paired to work on a project. But the person you are being paired with is like the person comes late, does not. If uh, maybe you've assigned tasks together, you okay, I'll work on the part A. You should work on part B. You find that like the person will not really um, work on it. Maybe they work on it really late before um you have to pre go present your results so all of those things if you you know that the part a that you are supposed to work on is in your circle of con is in your circle of influence that is what you can control so that's what you will necessarily work on you not really worry much about the other person's um behavior you can address it you can speak to them but at the end of the day you realize that those things they are out of your control so you not focus more on those things and when we talk about circle of influence, it's based on you making conscious choices. And when, when, we made, we, when you are making choices, you should recognize that the consequences of even our actions, they are still based on things, they can be based on things we cannot control. The consequences of our actions, they are not still in our control. What we can choose is our choices. Let me explain further. For example, if, if we have um, someone that is going to work late, Okay, let me use myself for example. If um, I have a meeting with my colleague, and maybe it's like a team meeting, everyone is expected to be there, and then I arrive late to the meeting, that is one thing there is I should take responsibility for my choice, arriving late. But the consequence could either be perhaps the, um, the co-founder is present at the meeting, or maybe the co-founder to arrive late. The consequences could be that maybe you get fired at the end of the day, or you get pardoned. Those things are the consequences may not be in your control, but you should be aware of your choices. You should know that, oh, your choices has consequences. And as a proactive person, you know that you, should be, you will be responsible for whichever consequences it falls under. So now you analyze where do you focus your energy on? Do you focus it more on your circle of influence, which are things you can control, you work on those things, or you focus more on your circle of concern, which are things that you cannot control. And from here, if you are focusing more on your circle of concern, then the circle of influence will be becoming like smaller as for a proactive person. But if a reactive person, you are always focusing on your circle of concern, things that are out of your control, things that are out of your control, you find out that if you, like those are the things that will be on your mind. You not really work on things that are in your control. 
So on the next slide, we have reflection. So here you just, from what we've said, we've looked at um, what proactivity is, how we can differentiate it from reactive and um, reactivity. And then we've looked at the circle of concern and circle of influence. So from those things we've talked about, we just think about it. Where are you currently spending the majority of your focus and time? Are you in the circle of concern or circle of influence? Just take um, 15 seconds to just think about it. You don't have to, um, you don't have to type it. You don't have to unmute if you don't feel like. So just think about it. Maybe your professional life, your personal life. How have you? What have you been focusing much of your energy on lately? Are you focusing on things that you can control? Are you working towards those things, or you are focusing more on things that are out of your control? So now the next reflection here is: Are you currently being personally effective as you can in your person in your professional life? Are you being as effective as you can in your professional life? Analyze if you are giving your all to your work. For example, this um, ten academy um, course you are taking the UTJ course, the training you are taking. Are you giving it your all, or you are always coming up with one excuse or the other just? as to why you cannot meet up with the deadline just think about it personally are you being effective as much as you can in your professional life and the third reflection here is what can you do today to expand your circle of influence to build more positive energy in your professional life what are some of the things that you can think of that you can do today to include and to increase your circle of influence to expand your circle of influence like for you to focus more on things that you can control rather than things that you can't control and yes lest i forget we um there is this serenity prayer i don't know if you are familiar with it you can um react if you are familiar with it or unmute if you know it then you can just recite it this serenity prayer, it really comes in play here, especially like trying to analyze your focus much of our, of our energy on. Anyone familiar with the serenity prayer? Anyone? So is this prayer for like um addicts that they say maybe alcohol addict or even drug addict when they go for the AA meeting? So, okay, so let me just say it. So it goes like this. God grants me the serenity to accept the things I cannot control, the courage to, to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. So it's basically just trying to like think more about where you can focus more of your energy and the things you should focus your energy and your time on, which, which is that you should focus it on the things that are in your control rather than the things that are out of your control. So um, are you with me or I'm just speaking to myself? You can use the reaction button. OK, OK, great. So um, let me continue. All right, so now we've um, looked at the differences between a proactive person, a reactive person, how we should focus our time and our energy on. So how are we going to identify um, some of these reactive responses? But how do you go about identifying a reactive response? So how can we like um, differentiate or identify our reactive responses? So the first one, looking at our thought pattern, how do we think? How do you think? Is it, are you the type that the, we have the haves and the bees? And what I mean by that is, so, okay, take for example, the haves, they are the people that are reactive. They have this uh, mentality that, okay, um, I have to have a degree. It's because of my, I don't have a degree that I could not get the promotion. Um, I have to, like, they just have a lot of things that they are, they are concerned with. That are, and instead of them focusing on how they can change those their situations, they are more focused more on the problem itself. So take for example, um, for example, if a person is in a workplace 
and then maybe for them to get promoted to the next level they have to they have to have maybe the master's degree or a postgraduate degree or maybe they have need to have a, um, a required skill or anything of sort so instead of them to like look at how they can develop themselves to have that skill so that they will be they can get the promotion instead they will be oh it's because i if i had had or if it's because i don't have so they are like focusing more on the problem rather than the solution nice for a reactive person but for a proactive person they, they are more of the bees what they can they are focused on more on what they can be rather than what they have already or what they don't have so they are focusing more on what they can be i can be um i can be more honest i can be open to more ideas i can um get my postgraduate degree like i can acquire new skills they have like i can be more they are open to situations they are always um open to learning more so that is one way to identify if you are reactive if you are having a reactive response or not so another another one is the reactive response has this all or not or nothing mentality for example if there you are okay yeah if we have a team lead then maybe one of the um, team members maybe came late to work on Tuesday and then also came late to work the um, month on Wednesday. But other than that, every other day they come work to work early or just on time. But on these two days, the Tuesday and the Wednesday, they came to work late. So instead of the team member, the team lead to address the situation at hand, which is them coming in, they just like, um, like overgeneralize like the all or nothing and over generalization like you always why do you always come late to work such a response you are focusing more on like the um the problem rather than like you be more attentive and listening for the persons on, like trying to understand the person's situation especially given that they don't do that on a daily basis so are you reacting to the um, problem at hand or are you being proactive to it so we you have to analyze your thought pattern which is I do have the mentality of the haves, or you focus on what you focus on what you don't have, or you limit yourself to the things you have, rather than building on what you can be, what you can have, and how you can um, increase your skills. Or are you the type that you are like the all or nothing person, or do you overgeneralize situation? Like, and when you do that, you escalate the situation more than how it is, because when you address someone like that, instead of them to think back they will them to they want to like be defensive so that is identifying a reactive response another way is to look at the behavioral signals so you look at it are you impulsive like do you have all these impulsive actions when someone comes to you maybe with a complaint or with um a feedback how do you respond to it do you take a time to like think about it or you are just you just respond based on your emotions so impulsive action or are you the type that you withdraw or you avoid situations? Everyone like wants to be like, so they don't like to maybe um maybe to voice out sometimes or even to criticize or even to like give an an um, positive criticism in, in this case. So instead of that, they just like altogether avoid the situation or just withdraw from it instead of like responding to it proactively. Or are you the type that reacts aggressively? To situation so all of those things we identify as someone who is reactive or which someone like giving a reactive response so the third one is the cognitive science and here is when you should identify maybe do you fail to consider alternative perspectives or maybe you have you want to work on a project you do you have your plan a your plan b and even the plan c for it so as a proactive person you have already envisioned those things you have a plan a in case you have um, everything goes on well and there's a plan b just in case if things does not work out the way you planned initially so those are like the cognitive science another thing is you're not you're a reactive person is like is just thinking and not acting that is a reactive person so they are not thinking for, before acting they don't think before they act so they just like act and most times they act aggressively in those situations and here they lack reflection they um lack self-reflection for example at the end of the day they tell them to like be self-aware to self-reflect on their own personal lives what they had some of their own shortcomings instead of that they focus on other people's and try to like put the blame on other people for example if you are um you are working on a team and maybe everyone has like what they are supposed to work on 
But for some reason, somebody just did not work on what they are supposed to do, or they not do it effectively. And yeah, as a team lead, it's still a bit to like, oh, like assume responsibility that oh, your team work, you, you guys are not able to like make the work as effective as positive as positive as possible. Instead of that, you are putting the blame on your team member, but you should self-reflect as a leader. Like when that thing happened, what how did you approach it? Did you delegate the task to other team members? Did you speak to the person in charge? So what did you do instead of you just putting the blame? So all of those things, that's how you differentiate a reactive and response from a proactive response. So now, how um now we are going to look at how to do so for it to be a proactive leader, things that should be in, in place, you should think long term. If you embrace long term thinking over short term um, things, and then you should seek to understand others rather than for it to like you should list like from what we've said when we talked about communication skills, seek to understand others, listen um reflectively, practice reflective um, listening. And also develop organizational skills such as the time management skills, the um, the time management skills, the organizational skills. So and be open to ideas and always have a calm demeanor. So as someone that is a proactive leader. So. Okay, so um, we've talked about the pro the differences between proactivity, reactivity. So we are going to look at some scenarios for to and and we are going to analyze it together. So it has to be um, it has to be you that you have to react to it to respond because I need your input here. So here, let's look at the first scenario that we have. So a team is working on a project with a tight deadline. One of the team members, Ishel, has has just informed the team leads that he won't be able to complete his part of the project on time, which will delay the entire project. Remember, they have a tight schedule, and because of that, they may not be able to like deliver the project on time. It will cause delay to the whole project. So the reactive response here that the team leader gave is, you shall, I understand that unexpected changes arise, but delaying the project will impact the entire team's hard work and jeopardize our deadline. How much of a delay are we looking at? Look at that response. Now let's look at how a proactive response would be like. So a proactive response would be like, thanks for letting me know. Can you help me understand what's causing the delay? Is there anything we can do to get you the resources or, and or support you need to get back on track? Let's work together to find a solution. Who else can who else can we involve to help us understand the deadline to me to help us meet the deadline? Sorry. And what can we adjust or, or prioritize to minimize the impact of the delay? So looking at this scenario and looking at the reactive response and the proactive response, can you spot any differences between these two responses? Please um, unmute and just speak. Any differences from what we've talked about in reactive um, response and proactive response and the reactive per, uh, person from the proactive person? So look at this scenario and look at the two responses. Is What are the major differences point out there? Yeah, the third. Yeah. Hello. I hope you can hear me. Yes, I can hear you. Okay, okay. Uh, what I've noticed is that on the reactive response, okay. uh, there is there is much concentration on, on the problem at hand, uh, okay. while at the proactive response, uh, uh, the their solutions, uh, their solutions are being provided to see how maybe the delay can be avoided instead of focusing on the problem. Okay, thank you, Gitele. So he says with the reactive response is focusing more on the problem and no um why the proactive is more on like finding solution to the problem, which is the major difference. And yes, when we talk about reactive response, though we mentioned like it is um aggressive, but so most times reactive response does not necessarily mean like the person we react aggressively 
or even be upset about the whole situation. It's just about them not um, looking for solutions. They are, they are, they are banking more on on the problem, looking more at the problem. That's what they focus more on, rather than looking for a solution on how they can um, face the challenge and be more pro pro productive at the team. So yes, that is the major difference. Anybody wants to add anything here, or we should go on to the second scenario. Can we go to the second scenario, or you have something you want to add? Okay, if we should go and just use the, rea um, the reaction button to our movement. Okay, so um, let's look at the second scenario. So the second scenario said your manager, Rachel, has just assigned a new project that you feel is beyond your capabilities and your expertise. So the project requires skills and knowledge you don't possess, and you are concerned about failing, which is justified. But well, here, this is the reactive response. It says, hi, Rachel. I appreciate the trust you have in to have But to be honest with you, I'm not sure I'm the right person for you. The requirements are beyond my skill set. I'm worried about normative expectations. But if we're not in the However, I want to ensure I deliver a quality report. I want to discuss the project to maintain an expectation to the digital. What option can I assess to build the skills? I need to remember mentors who can guide me through. So let's work together. Okay. Oh, hello, uh, is a comment about your network uh, or your mic? We can't hear you well. Your sound is breaking. Eh? Okay. Is it better now? Nope. It's not spoken. There's a real issue with your net. Is it better now? Yeah. Okay. Okay, great. So um the second scenario is your manager, Rachel, has just assigned you a new project that you feel is beyond your capabilities and expertise. The project requires skills and knowledge you don't possess, and you are concerned about failing. So the reactive response is, hi, Rachel, I appreciate the trust you have in me to handle this project. But I have to be honest with you, I'm not sure I'm the right person for this task. The requirements are beyond my skill set and expertise, and I'm worried about not, make, not meeting expectations. But the proactive response is more like, Rachel, thank you for considering me for this project. I appreciate the opportunity. However, I want to ensure I deliver high quality results. Can we discuss the project requirements and expectations in more detail? What resources or training can I assess to develop the necessary skills? Are there any team members or mentors who can guide me through this project? Let's work together to create a plan for success. So like look at looking at the scenario and the reactive response and the proactive response, what are the differences that you can spot there? Anyone? Should I call names? Okay, let me look at it. So, um, Leah, would you like to unmute and just? Yeah, Gitere. Yeah. Uh, in the in the first response, the reactive response, uh, I, I feel uh, this guy is so like is so negative about uh, the assignment. He's so afraid about it. Uh, in the proactive uh, response, uh, despite him not having the skill, he's open to 
uh, to learning the skill and uh, doing the task. So means he's very positive about doing and learning something new. Yeah. So um, the reactive response, the person was more on, oh, I don't have these skills. But with the practice, they are like, they acknowledge you don't have the skills, but then they, like, they are open to learn with the reactive response. So anybody wants to say any other thing? What other difference can you can you point at here? You can just look at the differences we've talked about before. So um, let me just say another one. So just like how we've pointed out, the proactive person is um, the reactive person is focusing more on the problem rather than finding a solution. But the proactive person is more of how to get the, so the work done, the so the best approach to get it done. Another thing you notice here is a proactive person, they are always open to learn, to learn things, which is what we pointed out with the halves and the bees. Like they, they look look at it like what they can be, what they can improve on. But the reactive person are just looking at the skills they have and not just looking at how they can improve on those things. So those are some of the differences between reactive and proactive person. So now I'm looking at those things, will you say you are a reactive person or you are a proactive person from what we've talked about? And in what situations, maybe you are, you are reactive in some situations or you are proactive in some others. And just like this 10 academic training as you've gone so far, have you been proactive about it or you have been reactive about it? Please unmute and speak, or you can just type your opinion in the chat box. Okay, um, to Snede, go on. I think for my side, uh, I have been uh, fully active. I just have to do it even if uh, I don't understand, as long as I have to complete what is required. Again, this, I will, uh, on this uh, 10 academy, I have been uh, proactive okay. because you just have to do the task, even though sometimes you don't understand, so you have to ask the question in the Slack or some way for you to understand. So that's me. So um, Tusneda says she has been proactive with the Tenet Academy and training because like she's open to learning more skills and not just like, oh, I don't know this. And then she just stops at that. She like asks questions, trying to find more things to do. So um, Leah says proactive. Sometimes the tax may have been daunting, but we took it on and still did it. Great. So um, that's very good. So with... Um, 10 Academy, you can say you have been proactive, but then just look at maybe your personal life. Have you been proactive or you've been reactive majorly? Just look at your personal life. You can just like self assess yourself. Have you been proactive or reactive majorly? Anyone? Sustain? Verify. A mix of both. Okay, yeah, I mean, both depend on situation. All right, so well, depend on situation. So now we've known like the differences between um, proactive and reactive, and I believe we can look at how we can be more um, proactive rather than reactive. So yes, let's look at the challenge documents. Look at what we have for this week. So this is it for activity. Okay, so we have that to succeed in the workplace, it is essential to be proactive. This means taking the initiative, anticipating challenges, and finding solutions without being told what to do. Proactive employees are a valuable asset to any organization, driving innovation, improving efficiency, and boosting productivity. So being proactive is the first habit discussed in the seven habits of highly effective um, people. And once you click on, the, on this link, 
it will take you to a page. Let me show you. So once you click on it, it will take you to this page. So once you have your, you can just click on the get and then it will be downloaded. So that is if you're interested in in reading the book, but I highly recommend it because it discussed other habits that can develop as well. So being proactive is the first habit discussed in the seven habits of highly effective people. It is more than just taking initiative. It's about taking responsibility for our own lives and choices. We have the power to choose our responses and make things happen. Proactive individuals, they recognize this responsibility and don't blame external circumstances for their behavior. Instead, they make conscious choices based on their values, not their feelings. So in contrast, reactive individuals are often affected by their environment and the behavior of others. They let external factors dictate their mood and performance. Proactive people, on the other hand, are driven by their values and can maintain a positive attitude and high performance regardless of the circumstances or how they feel. So the expected outcomes here is you'll be able to identify and address problems more effectively, take more initiative before they escalate, before the problem escalates, um, taking ownership and seeking opportunities for success and also prioritize your tasks, manage your time effectively, reducing stress, and then it improves your work-life balance. And yeah, the deadline for this task is on Friday, 8 p.m. UTC. So you have to get the um, task submitted on Friday, 8 p.m. UTC. So let's see what it's about. So the task is, you are a customer service manager at an online store. This is just a scenario. So you're a customer service manager at an online store. So your boss, Olivia, sends you an email about a customer or a customer complaint. And the email goes to us. She said, hi, team. I received an email from a customer who ordered a product last week. But it is still, but it still hasn't ha arrived. The customer is frustrated and threatening to leave a negative review. Additionally, the customer mentioned one that they were charged twice for the same order. The product descriptions was inaccurate, and the product is not what they expected. They tried to contact customer service multiple times, but receives no responses. So the next thing is, please, then I say, please look into this issue and resolve it as sir. We can't afford to lose customers due to shipping delay, delays, billing errors, and poor communication. Best, Olivia. So now looking at the scenario, and this is the reference that I just to give you a little bit more background about it. The customer ordered a product on Friday, and the store's shipping policy states that the orders are processed and shipped within three to five business days. The customer didn't receive any updates or tracking information about their order. The store uses to, um, a third party shipping service, and there might be delays due to high volumes or unforeseen circumstances from the third party. The billing system has been experiencing technical issues leading to duplicate charges. There's another thing that you looked at. Then the product description was outdated and hasn't been updated to reflect changes in the product. And the customer service team has been overwhelmed with requests leading to delayed responses. So this one is just like a background information about how the whole thing. But now looking at the um, email that the manager sent to you, you should develop, assuming you are the customer service manager, that you, you should develop um, Create a reactive email and a proactive email reply to Olivia. To create a reactive email, respond to the email that Olivia sent to you. So you should, and you are the customer service manager, so you should you'll be responding in on behalf of your team. So you should create a reactive email and a proactive email reply to Olivia. And once you've done that, you should write down and explain at least four differences that you spot between your reactive email response and your proactive email response not slack so it's an email that she sends to me sorry so you should create um you should spot the four differences between the reactive email response and the proactive email response so once you've done that you should share a detailed story about the situation at Sten academy 
where you took where you took a proactive approach. What happened? What did you do? How did it turn out? What did it turn out? So, what true lessons did you learn from this experience that will help you continue to grow and improve in the future? And then the fourth one is you should share a detailed story about a situation also at Ten Academy where you reacted to a situation without thinking ahead. What happened? How did you respond? What was the outcome? So what lessons did you learn from this experience that will help you improve and become more proactive in the future? So the last one is you should reflect on your typical behavior, like in general, not just limited to 10 Academy. So reflect on your typical behavior in challenging situations. Do you tend to be proactive or reactive? And what are your strengths and weaknesses in these regards? Maybe if you are reactive, what are your strengths? If you are proactive, tell us your strengths. If you are reactive, tell us your weaknesses. And in these regards, so what strategies can you use to improve your proactive behavior and minimize the reactive responses? So those are the five questions. So you should look at the scenario, you should develop the um, email responses, with proactive and reactive email responses to Olivia. So you should outline um, four differences between the two and explain them, the differences, why you chose those differences and how you identify them. Then a you should share a proactive um, scenario at Zen Academy and a reactive situation as well. Then reflect on your typical behavior when you are faced with challenging situations. How do you respond? Do you respond? Um, proactively or reactively. So now for the submission, your responses should be a maximum of 12 slides PowerPoint presentation, convert it into a PDF and submit it on the 10X. And once again, the deadline is on Friday, 8 p.m. So yeah, and you convert it to PDF and that is the deadline. So that is the um, challenge for this week. The, do you understand or I should explain more or you have any question on that before we call it a day? We still have six minutes. Okay, so um, Linda says she gets it. She does not have any question. What about um, Sustin, Gitere, Leah, Zinab? Do you all understand or I should go by it again? All right, I think we all get it now. Okay, so um, also be aware of the deadline and have a good Productive week. Let me stop sharing. Uh, let me stop recording. I mean. <laughs>